Hello everyone and welcome back to some more StarCraft 2. Today it's time for something very exciting. So here's the thing, about a month or so ago, Alex007, who by the way makes StarCraft 2 content in Russian, in case you're unfamiliar, I'll go ahead and post a link to his channel down below the description of this video, but he announced a tournament that he called the 4th Race Contest. And the way that this works is that essentially he was asking StarCraft 2 modders and game designers to make an entirely new race, obviously mostly using in-game assets, like for example from the campaign. So what I've got for you today, and I have no idea what to expect for this, but I'm very excited to find out. What I've got for you today is not just a game of like Terran vs. Protoss or Zerg vs. Protoss, this is gonna be hybrid versus Protoss. So first off, in the bottom right -hand corner of Curious Minds, we have, I don't know, a barcode player. No, no idea how good this guy is. And then the opponent that we were already looking at earlier. Look at this. I'm already excited. This is so sick. Don't look at Samwise, who's spinning around with his face right there on the main base. Um, <laughs> we have someone playing with the hybrid who goes by the name of Magical. So I did ask Alex as well. These are two players that are actually playing. Um, I have no idea. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't be going into this blind because I don't really know exactly what to expect. But let's try, let's try and figure out what's going on. I'm going to be casting two games. One of the hybrids going up against Protoss and then another hybrid going up against Zerk as well. So hopefully we'll find out roughly <laughs> how they work by the end of this video. So there's an Ionic Pylon. Supply uh, allows you to warp in more units. Network power source. It's got a source and network charging. What? Network power source ranged and network restoration increased by three uh, by, by 33%, okay. Transform to movable pylon, allows the pylon to move. And then there's a 100 energy skill on it as well, so you have a, an energy bar at the bottom. Allows the ionic pylon teleport any structure, okay, I guess it's maybe translated from like, maybe Russian or something. But it allows the ionic pylon to teleport any structure, excluding ionic pylons, to the target network location. Teleporting time equals to 50% of construction time. Alright, so later on into the game, I guess you can move things around. Then there's a Void Rift, which I guess is like a barracks slash gateway type of thing. So it's making a, uh, a unit right now, or I guess it's warping in a unit right now. Ooh, that was a sweet little animation as well. Called a warrior. I guess this is like a melee zealot type of thing. Oh my god, it looks badass. So a lot of these assets are already in the game from the different StarCraft campaigns. Um, by the way, I'm not really going to be able to keep track of everything going on. I will definitely be missing loads of stuff. Um, so yeah, bear, bear with me here. I'm probably going to be making plenty of mistakes. Anyways, so there's a load of units to make. There's a Flayer, a Warbringer, a Sentinel, a Silent, a Dreadnought, a Reaver. It's a different kind of Reaver than what I expected. And then a Dominator. Then it has an Air Page, allows the warping of air units. Okay, so the Void Rift apparently is capable of warping in both ground and then also air units. Fair enough. Then over here we have the Stasis Cell. There's Fury, periodically increases the number of hits of Flare basic attacks by 2 to 4. Deconstruction increases Warrior damages versus structures. Increases Warbringer, or Warbringer rather, attack range of Mace Strike by... I don't know what any of these things mean. Increases Flare damage movement speed by 30%. Okay, so I think this is like the cybernetics core of the hybrid right over here. Now, obviously, by the way, none of these games are going to be particularly balanced. Oh my god, look at that. It's like a little baby Dahaka right now, running across the map. None of these games, I'm expecting them to be particularly balanced, but I love the idea of people messing around with an additional race. Obviously, adding an entire extra faction to StarCraft 2 uh, would definitely change the balance of the game quite a bit, right? I mean, as you may be aware, in, for example, Warcraft 3, it was quite uncommon for certain races to be relevant in the meta at all for like a long period of time <laughs> so basically even though there were technically four factions in that game you could uh yeah you, you could really effectively only play like three of them in tournaments anyways um it's cool though that people are at the very least giving it a try and what is this this is okay this is an engine so i think this is like a forge or like an evo chamber or an engineering bay this looks really cool the thing is i've never really looked at a lot of these structures before i know they're in the game it's, what's this then a Vespian Concentrator? So there's a Harvester over here for... It's only got one probe in that one. Or, or one, what do you call it? A minion in that one. Then what is this? A Vespian Concentrator. Each three seconds restores Vespian of... Or Vespian, rather, of closest Harvester doesn't stack. So wait, does this, like, number go up? 
Yeah, it goes up. <laughs> All right, so it basically is allowing you to sit back a little bit more. So this is a structure that like a lot. I don't know if I like that, to be honest. I've never been a fan of uh, passive play, and one of the most significant changes they ever made to StarCraft 2 was reducing the amount of minerals in each base. Anyways, I, I actually really, really like that change still. It's probably my favorite change they ever made to StarCraft 2 because it's, it's forcing people out into the map to try and go for other expos. Anyways, so there's a Silent over here, and then there's Sentinel, aka a hybrid Dahaka. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. I don't know how this goes. Okay, blink right there. Sadly, Dahaka ends up going down. I can imagine, though, that there's gonna be some very big balance issues. Maybe there's, like, a hybrid unit here that is way too powerful. Would not be surprised at all, but so far there's actually- Oh, that's literally a probe dying animation. <laughs> that's literally a probe dying. Fair enough. Anyways, couple of workers right there get sniped, but luckily our Protoss player here is... I guess enough of a gentleman to back off here and at the very least give this hybrid player some time to build up as well. So there's a couple Void Rifts going down. The Void Rifts apparently just construct everything. I don't know if there's other unit producing structures. Can I actually click on a probe? I can. So there's a temple, that's the main structure. A harvester, that's the gas. Pylon, Void Rift, Stasis Cell, Vespian Concentrator. A construct, powerful anti-air guardian. Oh, okay. So those are, I think, from like, um, what's that? Is it Zeratul that has those in co-op? Anyways, I think these are like the static defense for the hybrid. That's pretty sweet. Then there's also some advanced structures. There's the engine, the void portal, enables the screamer, pollinator, and navigator. What's that? Is that a navigator? No, that's just... <laughs> well, I mean, I know what it is, guys. Don't make fun of me, but... I... Wait, that's the, that's the pearls. That's why. All right. I think the navigator is probably that version. Oh, my God. Whoa! These silents are hitting, hitting hard. So wait, what does it say about the silent? Which one is that? Oh, here we go. Ranged mid-game support strider. Yeah, okay. They kind of seem like a mix between an immortal and, uh, and a stalker or something. They look badass. They look really cool. This is working out surprisingly well so far. I actually did not anticipate that somehow. So there's the Crystallic Shrine. Improve Void Rifts connected to Crystallic Shrines in Network. Contains upgrades for hybrid units. There's a processor. All right. Those are hard to come by these days. <laughs> They're expensive. Uh, upgrades Reaver to Advanced Reaver. Upgrades Dominator to Advanced Dominator. And then there's also the Nemesis Catacomb, which enables the Nemesis. The Nemesis. Okay, I don't know what that is. Maybe we'll find out about it. Dude, look at this. It's like a whale meets a... What is this thing? Oh my god. Alright. A little bit creepy, but fair enough. Alright, so I think we got the general gist of it. It feels very protosy so far. So he's actually teleporting a, a structure there, isn't he? Oh wait, no. I think that was just actually the, the wireframe. I thought he was teleporting a structure. I guess you'd need to have ranged over there somewhere as well. By the way, I, uh, I'm playing with health bars turned off. Or only for, like, selections of me, because for some reason it, like, looks funny. There's, like, a, a white section on their health bars. So there's the Dreadnought. Each Dread... Oh, wait, no. Dreadnought, rather. Each Dreadnought ranged attack reduces target's energy by 12. And they have a spell called Paralyzing Girth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that is lost in translation, but Paralyzing Girth is, uh... Right. It's a family-friendly show, Loco. Creates a sphere at the target point for 4.3 seconds, in which enemy units are silenced and suppress its energy regeneration. Alright. Alright, alright. Yeah, so it feels very proto C, right? In a lot of ways. So there are, like, SCVs building over here. It's like a mix between, uh, hey, it's a hybrid! Hey, Loco, you figured it out. Protoss right here trying to target fire down the temple. Does manage to get it. There's one little bubble over there. Who put down that bubble? Was that the Paralyzing Girth? I think that may have been the Paralyzing Girth. It reads a little bit like a stasis. So look, there's a spirit. Wait, no. Okay, I thought that this was gonna be that, uh... Observer thing that we saw earlier. Core Exchange. Spirit self-destructs and provides vision of target enemy units for 14 seconds. So wait, are these things free? Where is it coming out of? So those are Void Rifts. Where's the... Oh, look, there's one of the anti-ground versions, and you can transform them to anti-air. Ah, okay. So it's like a spore crawler slash spine crawler mix that can transform between the two, but I guess it can't move. 
Or actually, no, you can obviously teleport it with the pylons. This is actually surprisingly cool. Let's see how strong it is. I've got a feeling it did very little. <laughs> to be fair, that was like, uh, you know, more than a dozen stalkers going up against one of those things. How much do that cost? Uh, 225. They are pretty expensive. I was trying to figure out, though, where that, um... I was trying to figure out where those things come. Out of the Void Portal? No. Where'd the, uh... Where'd the Scout come out of? The, the Spirit? I have no idea. Maybe you can make them out of Void Rifts. Not 100% sure. Anyways, fight going on right here at the bottom section of the map. Right now, there's a few Screamers added into the mix as well. Look at those things. Every once in a while... Oh, Disruptors. Uh, every once in a while, we see these Screamers flying around on some of the maps in StarCraft 2. There's another fight going on up north as well. So they have an ability called... Ener oh, wait, Energation. Restores 1.7 network per one energy to target ally unit. And they also have Desolation, creates a cloak aura around the Screamer. All units in range are cloaked for five seconds. This is so cool! This is genuinely really cool. So far, this is working out way better than what I anticipated. Oh god. Well, those disruptors hit quite hard. So if you look right here at the health of all of these units, a couple of, uh... Yeah, disruptors wandering pretty far forward as well, and they do get picked off. This is a scary looking army. I don't know what it does, or how the counters work, but it looks scary. I think there should be enough protos though to push this back. Yeah, yeah. Battery overcharge is pretty good, of course. Alrighty. A new temple was built all the way up north. So by the way, it is like a mix between a... It's a hybrid structure, right? Which is the entire purpose of obviously this, this, this race, but... It's like a... It's like a nexus with a couple of spines sticking out of it from the sides. I don't know if this are like, I don't know if all of these things are already in like the... The map maker. Like if you go into the Starcraft map maker, which I've done once and I was completely confused and I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, but I know there's a ton of assets already in there. So a lot of these were not necessarily made by the map maker. Maybe none of them were made by the map maker. I don't know. Maybe they... I don't know. I don't know anything. Um... I know Blizzard has already made a ton of these from the different campaigns, right? And I've never really looked up close to a lot of those structures before. Because, I mean, you know, kind of tricky to pull off. Oh, my god. The sound effects are pretty neat, too. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more. So now we're actually getting into the Nemesis. Was that Nemesis that structure or that... that yeah, yeah, the Nemesis Catacomb. So, there it is. Increases horror armor by two. Okay, so I think these void rifts right now are switched over a lot to make air units instead. So there's screamer, pollinator, navigate. Oh, there's the navigator. All right, there you go. I figured it out, guys. Only took me an extra five minutes or so. The horror, a late game assault air units, deals splash damage to enemy air units and slows down ground units. That seems a little bit too strong. And then the nemesis, the flagship air unit disruptors. Oh my god, kill everything. Um, flagship air unit can use two attack modes. So they have the disintegrator. Activate to increase weapon damage by... Oh, I think he just switched it over. Did it just say 69%? I feel like I read 69%, but I might be wrong. Okay, a couple of Dark Temple are actually going after the temple up north. They're going to be able to shut that down. The hybrid player right here slowly being contained. It does feel a little bit Protossy. It feels more Protoss than like Terran and Enzor. Maybe that's just because the hybrid realized that the Protoss actually just, you know, had the better tools. <laughs> they had the, uh... Oh, they have time warp? Warp space-time within the target area for 9.6 seconds. All enemy units and structures within the field have a fifth, or have their attack and movement speeds reduced by 50%. Okay. Alright, what did it say? Yeah, it did say 69%. So, activate to increase weapon damage by 69%, range by 7, and reduce target armor by 2. Attack speed is reduced and drains a network. So, how do you keep track of your network? I'm not 100% sure. Anyways. Massive Stalker Zealot army coming up here. This is some low, low tech right here for our Protoss player. I wish actually it would tech up a little bit more. All right, new base will just simply be uh, be acquired. Tempest are being added into the mix, which I think is a wonderful idea. So 
So we're at, 100, uh, we're at 196 supply right now for the hybrid versus 180 for the Protoss player. I'm not sure, by the way, what level these players are. I mean, it's a barcode player, so it's kind of hard to say. Man, <laughs> these things suck. For 225 minerals, they're worse than a... Uh, well, literally any static defense in the game, man. That was, that was not great. A lot of workers end up going down here as well, and Protoss is desperately trying to out-multitask his opponent. The problem is that Protoss will still have to deal with this uh, this hybrid ir ir army, right? So if you look at the army value right now of the active forces, you can see that 5.32 or 5.3k minerals and 3.8k gas right here for our hybrid player versus well, a pathetic amount of resources right now for the Protoss. He is going into carriers, which is great. He's also going double upgrades here for those uh, those Protoss air weapons, which is great and all, or those Protoss air units, but. It can definitely backfire very, very easily. Protoss though, all army, or sorry, hybrid though, all army hotkeying in that direction. Immediately will get uh, pulled back or pushed back. Hey, there's a horror. Look at that. Aren't those the walking units? I feel like those are usually walking units in the... Uh, they look like they sit in a desk chair. Look at that. I mean, it's a little hard to say when there's a plot. Look at that. That's kind of funny. What do, they, uh, what do they have? Horror Network can absorb energy or can absorb damage without losing health. Okay, so they all have... Okay, yeah, yeah, so this guy has 50 energy. And I guess you have to go back to one of the pylons, maybe, to, like, charge up your horrors again? Is that how it works? I'm, I'm not 100% sure as to how you recharge those kinds of things. So, source network charging after 60 seconds increase network power. Source ranged and network restoration by 33%. Okay. Yeah, I think that's how it works. So you're supposed to go back home after a little while. So maybe these units are extremely strong, but they can't sustain themselves for very long when they're out in the battlefield, so they have to go back home. Maybe maybe it's something along those lines. Considering this tournament, though, was, uh, was announced literally about a month ago, someone cooked this up in just a couple weeks' time. Which is honestly very impressive. Makes you wonder what happens if they had another year, right? Because I'm pretty sure it's it's probably just one person that worked on this. I'm excited to figure out how the hybrid work against the Zerg. When we have a little bit more of an understanding of how they function. I mean, I feel like they have to make wall as well, right? Unless the Zerg is... Uh, gonna be cool about it. That death animation was awesome. Anyways, so a couple of uh, hybrid units here are being sacrificed. But there is a huge hybrid army all the way in the top right hand corner. They're shooting lasers and shooting balls and stuff. No armor upgrades. That's a little unfortunate. But these nemesis, or these nemesi, I guess, would be the plural. Nemesises. Wait, what? Activate to increase weapon damage by 61%? What happened? Do they have to recharge? I swear it said 69 earlier. I thought that was pretty nice. Anyhow. Probes moving on over towards the bottom left-hand corner, only to find an entire... Let's let's see how good these constructs are. Oh, they deal splash damage! Oh, okay. Maybe I missed that, huh? I didn't realize they dealt splash damage. I was gonna say, like, when there was one unit coming in, they, they seemed to do nothing. But that was actually pretty good. Did they benefit from... Okay, no, I thought for a second they benefited from upgrades. That would be something. I, by the way, I'm casting with this specific observer interface, even though it's, uh... It's probably the ugliest looking one, and it takes up a lot of the screen real estate. I'm, I'm casting with it just so I can actually hover over the units and read what they say. They also have, like, cool portraits on everything. Wait, do they... No, look, they, they have, like, unique 3D portraits for a lot of this stuff. Isn't that cool? I mean... Don't know if this guy really looks like it. <laughs> this looks more like one of those dogs from the ice mission. I think in Heart of the Swarm with the flash freeze, but... <laughs> Each Dreadnought ranged attack reduces target energy by 12. So wait, shields are not considered energy, right? So I guess that's specifically for hybrid versus hybrid. Have we gotten to that level of balancing already? Alright. Now the Protoss army is actually looking mighty dangerous. We're adding on a lot of upgrades. 
I feel like there is going to be a clash between these two. All right, there it is. Protoss engaging right now on top of that hybrid army. My god, there are some Purification Nova that is exploding on the ground as well, but it looks to me like most of the air units, though, yep, are absolutely reigning supreme. My god. <laughs> that Nemesis player just destroyed him. Mass Nemesis OP Blizzard, please. Wait, no, there's actually horrors too in here. There's horrors, and I think there may be some. Look at that. It's got like. I don't know. Smog coming out of its butt. Um. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bro, why did you kill your own Nemesis? Is this next level, like, hybrid BM? Is that what we're doing right now? Alright. Yeah, these Nemesis are pretty powerful. Right now he decides to fight on top of all of these uh, static defensive structures as well. Which may be a little bit much. Can they hit ground too? I think they can hit ground as well. Yeah, air and ground. Careful though. Dude, they have so much health. Oh my god, alright. Brodel's actually pushing this back right now. This is a surprisingly good game though, that's sick. So you can't warp in any units. An advanced dominator. Where's that one coming out of? Is that... Is, no, that's a warbringer. Oh, there's the advanced dominator. Oh my god, look at that. What a thing. What a massive thing. Alright, so what does it do? It's also got time warp. Okay, so I guess it's like an improved version of it. May strike activates to increase weapon damage by 80% and range to 10. All right, fair enough. This is actually a surprisingly good game. I did not expect that this was going to be like this. I expected it to be very one-sided. Let me know down below in the comment section. What do you think of this so far? Like, if you compare it to your expectations, you know, at like the one minute mark of this video and right about right now. This is surprisingly promising. Now the problem is, right, if you add an extra faction to a, a, a multiplayer real-time strategy game, it doesn't just make the balance ever so slightly more difficult, it makes balance way more difficult. Because right now, if you make any changes to Terran versus Protals, you gotta keep in mind as well that it's gonna make changes to Terran versus Zerk, right? If you say, for example, you buff, I don't know, the Reaper in Terran versus Protals for some reason. It's got to also affect Terran versus Zerk, and oftentimes you can kind of find a, a middle ground, right? TVT obviously is also important to keep in mind, but if you have like an extra faction added to it, it makes like, for those of you that understand math better than me, you understand how difficult uh, it can make the balance, because a lot of these things are... Oh, <laughs> a lot of these things are, are very, very tightly, tightly controlled. What is that? Oh my god, wait! Justice reigns from above! Did Carrix all of a sudden get into this multiplayer game? What is what is throwing it? Is that the mace cannon maybe? It must be. It looks to me like the hybrid player is absolutely smashing this Protoss death ball. How do you like it now, Protoss? <laughs> GG well played is cold. And with that, it's gonna be our hybrid player who is victorious. Alrighty, so this time around, it looks like we have Alex himself facing off against the hybrid on Blackburn. Alrighty. Not exactly sure what to expect from this matchup. I've got a feeling it's gonna... It's gonna be somewhat similar to Zork versus Protals. I'm not 100% sure if that's true, but it feels to me like the hybrids... Yeah, look, he's even now, I think, making his very first pylon here at the front, so he can make a wall off. It feels a bit Protals-y. does look sweet. It does look really cool. Okay, what else are we making? So we're making a Void Rift. Oh my god, it's moving. Oh, that's so weird. So you can redo your wall off? I think you can redo your wall off. I guess if you're not entirely happy with the positioning of your structures, you can move them around. Fair enough. Not the next side themselves, though. That would be... Or, or the temple rather themselves. That would be something. So, there's also a mechanical reincarnation ability on the... The minion. So, this is the, the thing that constructs stuff. 
Minion transforms into a spirit, a small fa Oh, that's where it came from! So wait, you can do this for free? And then it can explode on the other side of the map? Uh-huh, so you gotta choose if you wanna have a worker unit or if you wanna have a scouting unit that can't, I'm assuming, return back to its previous form. There's the warrior going across the map. It's kind of like a mix between an adept and a zealot and a zerkling. Kind of feels like that anyway. And apparently a stalker too. <laughs> it can attack air. Didn't realize that part. It's just gonna go straight into the main base. This unit came out so quick. What in the world? Good control here so far by Alex. He's making six zerklings here. Spore? Yep. So six Zerklings are just about to spawn. This unit came out so early, it's actually insane. Nice little bit of harassment though. Very nice control by Alex as well. Keeping everything alive beautifully. This thing is fast. And easy to produce, huh? Wow, alright. Anyways, in the meantime on the other side of the map. We do have a flare coming up as well. A ferocious mid-game annihilator of biological units. Guess what? Literally every single Zerg unit is biological. So I'm assuming mass flare. Let's go. <laughs> they don't look as intimidating as the other guy. Oh my god, it looks like a little baby dinosaur. Oh, that's a weird looking dinosaur. Increases the number of hits of the next basic attack from 2 to 4. Right, so Fury sounds very, very, very powerful. Is that what we're getting? No. We're getting the Berserker upgrade currently. Or is that a... No, it's a unit? No, it is an upgrade. Increases flare damage. Move... Wait, damage and movement speed by 30%? Is that what it says? Wow. Um, so far it seems like Zerk is having a rather tough time. I like how Alex is going for Overlord speed. Just so he can scout his opponent a little bit more effectively, I suppose. Anyways. Work account at this point is looking mighty fine, though, for our hybrid player. But I'm not exactly sure what kind of follow-ups we should expect. So what kind of units are we making? Is it just gonna be more flayers? I guess that would make sense. Yeah, he's going minions and flayers for now, and then another Void Rift inside of the main base. Here's the Overlord Scout. Can these things hit up? No, they cannot. So he's repositioning the Ionic Pylon here to uh, optimize the vision right there, or optimize the the range of it. He's going into the main base, and he scouts that it's Void Rifts. Now the problem is, literally everything seems to come out of a Void Rift. <laughs> so he can scout and it's like, okay, there's three Void Rifts. Uh, uh, now what? What does it do? Nobody knows. Fairly certain the hybrid player also doesn't really know. Anyways, there's a Roach Warren coming up. Evo Chamber coming up. Third hatchery is finally done. He'll probably start making a bunch of drones for that as soon as possible. If I were the, uh, if I were the Zerk player, I guess I would just play like Roach Ravager or something along those lines. Just a, a tried and true unit composition. So now Warbringers are being added into the mix. A potent mid-game destroyer of armored units. Alright, well Roaches are armored, so that makes sense. Use Mace Strike to provide long-range support. Okay, so Lair is done, so Overlord is gonna start pooping a little bit of creep right here over at what would normally be the third base. Oh my god, look at them. That would normally be the third base of the hybrid player. He's gonna start making a pylon over here, but uh... Not exactly sure how this is gonna play out. So I guess he, he needs to have a unit, right, that can shoot up. I know one of those warriors from earlier can do it. These are like Hydras. Oh my god, look at them, they're like Naga Hydras. Whoa, those look funny. So wait, those are called the Warbringers? Okay, fair enough. At the same time on the other side of the map, no detection available. And there's quite a few roaches already out, but I'm not sure what the dynamic is, right? Brenda over here, a little bit overly ambitious, immediately gets killed. It's impressive how playable this is. Oh my god, there's, ah, there's Carrax coming down again. Do they have top bar abilities or something? Like, where does this even... Is it... It's, 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 it's these things. The ma That's the maze strike that we're seeing. Is 
I feel like there might just be a little bit too much, although 12 roaches are uh, just about to spawn. Plus one missile, also just about to finish up here for the Zerg, as we all know. Makes these units far more powerful. And for all intents and purposes, this is a, a three base all-in, or sorry, a two base all-in right now for our Protals. Or for our, uh, our hybrid, rather. He is going for another Nexus, also known as a Temple. I'm getting very Protals vibes. I can't be the only one. I'm getting very Protal C vibes. Like small amounts of units in general, but they hit like trucks. The way that the structures look, the way that like the Protals, you know, ba uh, the Protals players normally like set up their bases as well and the pylons and all that. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting very heavy Protals vibes. All right. Roach is actually going for a counterattack, trying to get a council on that temple. There's a lot of these uh, flares out, but the flares, they kind of seemed like anti, like they, it said anti-biological, so I'm not 100% sure. But it seemed more like anti-zirkling type of armies. Oh my god, look at them. There's some pollinators coming out. Whoa, alright, pollinators. Pollinators attack poison in the enemy unit for 19 damage over 2.3 seconds. Void toxicity can stack up to 10. What? So wait, you're saying you can deal 190 damage over 2.3 seconds? That's faster than Psionic Storm. Psy Storm deals like 75 damage, right? That's <laughs> that's pretty good. Cloaks the unit, preventing enemy units from seeing or attacking it. A cloaked unit will only be revealed by detectors or effects. Drains 10 network per second. So can you see easily how much network you have or like how much network energy is available? Anyways, I'm not sure. Here they go into the main base, though. Oh, cloaking has been activated. They're gonna start harassing some of the workers. <laughs> it's like an oracle, but worse. An oracle with cloaking. They actually did kill quite a few probes, just, or uh, quite a few drones just now, though. They're not done yet. Okay, a Spire is coming up. Gold base will be cancelled as well. Nice little bit of double-pronged attack right here by the, uh, the barcode player. <laughs> they have so much range! They're pollinating everything, man! They can outrange spore. Okay, well, I was gonna say that seems a bit sloppy, but they can outrange spore crawlers. That might be a bit much. All right, considering it came out at like the six-minute mark and probably could have been rushed a little bit sooner. I've uh, got a feeling it being able to outrange uh, spores might be a little, a little much. He didn't make uh, he didn't make one of those structures, by the way, behind the gas geyser to try and uh, keep it up and running for a little while longer. All right, a lot of additional void rifts are warped in. Six mutas are coming up. All right, Alex ready to go for some harassment. I like it. It's pretty popular to do against Protoss these days as well, even against Stargate openers. Although I guess against warp rift openers. They can just kind of make whatever you, you know, it's hard to scout this though, right? Like, that's one of my main criticisms here. You can scout what this uh, this hybrid player is doing, but you have no idea. Because they can kind of make everything pretty easily. The Construct being moved over from anti-air to anti-ground, which is great against the Roaches, I'm sure. But it's not going to be so good against the Mutas. Mutas already, ready, uh, already waiting, ready to send in their Flippy Flappies. Nice little bit of harassment right here, though, by the Zerg. Getting a bunch of damage done. All right, now that they're set to anti-ground, he's gonna be able to move in with some flying units. All right. Oh, they went. They they transformed real quick. Well, that was actually kind of sad. Here I am hyping it up. All right, the silence here are moving forward. They're really big, by the way. They're like stalkers, but bigger. They kind of remind me of spiders in a way, right? Maybe it's like the. Uh, the way they sit in the middle of it and like the really long legs. I guess stalkers already remind me a little bit of spiders. These are more spider-like. 
So I guess that's like the shield. Oh, <laughs> the pylon is running. Gold base being acquired right now as well. Zork already got his gold base up and running here. It's going to be a, a swarm host based army from Alex. All right. So we're going to go road ravager into swarm host. Actually makes sense. I feel like this is an army that doesn't really want to move all too much. That of the hybrid player, that is. So sending in the, the Locust Waves makes sense. Although you might want to get a couple more than this. Oh, if he wants to fight this, I thought it was going to be for harassment. Dude, hybrid OP confirmed. <laughs> they were both cloaked and capable of shooting things out of the high heavens. Okay, so more Swarm Hosts are available. Normally with Swarm Host, I'd be very critical right now of the first wave. Normally with Swarm Host, the first wave is so important. There is an Overseer available, and the Overseer can see that there is a, a hybrid army on the other side. Couple of Corrosive Biles trying to get some work done. Alright, now the Locusts are gonna engage, but they kill nothing. Just damaging a couple of those units. Yura's in the main base, getting destroyed by a Horror right now. A horror and a construct. And this feels bad, right? As a Zork player, especially when you're chasing down an army with Swarm Host Locusts. You're like, oh, just stop running. Let me get some damage out on the board. I've got a feeling... This hybrid army is gonna get to a point where it's just gonna destroy everything. Maybe we're already there. He just needs to run from the Locust, I suppose. Or cloak his army units. Yeah, I don't mind it. One of those uh, hybrid units is capable of cloaking. Cloaking the rest of the army, that is. Is it these guys? The Silencers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the Screamers, rather. Sorry. They have a skill called Desolation. A couple of Zerklings trying to grow around the back. Swarmos, though. Now we're actually getting some work in. And this is not so good of a fight anymore now for the hybrid. Yeah, those locusts, man, they deal too much damage. Alright, he decided to stay around for a little while too long. Probably feeling the same way that I felt, like thinking you could just straight up win the game at that point. Now the nemesis have arrived as well, though. And those nemesis are pretty strong. There's already corruptors out. Alright, one of them is being targeted here as well. Roach is going in from the bottom. Yeah, needs to be careful. Got a feeling that once more, the hybrid player, uh, the hybrid player rather, is looking for a bunch of damage. Base in the top right-hand corner has been acquired by Alex, so he's going to be able to transfer some workers over there. But in the meantime, on the other side of the map, the gold base is mining. Swarmos are being picked off, and now did Protoss army, or, or sorry, once again, I'm saying Protoss, man. Uh, once again, it seems like we're seeing a switch on over for the hybrid player to watch a ground or from a ground-based army into an air-based army. I mean, I think he should make a lot more of these. The Nemesis seem insanely good. I'm not exactly sure if Mass Corruptor could just pick that off, though. Maybe that's the reason why he's a, bit, uh, a little bit reluctant to just make that switch. Okay, Locust landing. Nicely done. Target firing down whatever he can. Reinforcing hybrid units have also shown up, though. Got a feeling that the Zerg may have actually overextended just a tad. All of the Corruptors at this point are gone. There's no anti-air available in this Zerg army. The Locusts are available, but like... If you look at the supply count, it looks like the Zerg player has got a load of stuff. But... Swarmos kind of... I don't know. They, they kind of create an illusion of safety. It's fine. It's just like not going to kill a whole lot of stuff. Because technically speaking, I mean, you can obviously stagger the waves where you activate like half of the Locust and then the other half. My god, there's so much ranged on these units, it's insane! Alright, even the regular good old Silent could already shoot from the rocks onto the hatch. I think Alex is gonna need a very good Locust wave if he wants to obtain a victory here. Is he gonna activate all of them? He is. And the hybrid player runs. He should just run all the way. I don't know why he's running that direction. That's a mistake. He could get surrounded right now by Zerklings and then everything would die. Oh, once again, though, he's got Cloak. <laughs> There's no detection available for the Zerk. All right, eventually, 
The clog does run out, but he immediately re reactivates it. Now he can go for some damage while these locusts are still on cooldown. There's a 15 second window here. Yep, I don't mind it at all, especially considering the hybrid at this point is maxed out. Queen's coming in from the side. Got a feeling, guys, that there is a little bit too much for this hybrid player. I almost feel like the hybrid player is doing the Zork a favor right now by not making so many of those nemesis whatever the plural is. <laughs> but there it is. The hybrid player, they win twice.